Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And uh, don't forget that on Patreon, you can watch Simon have a go at Islands of Insight on his own as well. I mean, you can watch the VOD of the first go at it that we both did together. Uh, but Simon's so keen to keep playing the game, he couldn't wait around. <laughs> but he did record himself continuing into it. And that's brilliant. Um, that's on Patreon. And there's always loads of content there. My crossword solves and uh, Simon's super long solves as well. Um, do check those out. And what else have we got? We haven't yet got the solutions to the competition from last month, but they will occur in due course. Now, we've also got, of course, all our apps, which are fabulous. Um, and we are beginning work on a Fog of War app as well. That'll take some time to fruition, but really looking forward to creating that, bringing it to you. Um, there's also many things always, all the time going on. The deluxe edition of the Fog of War book is out, if you like Fog of War. I think at some point we'll be able to find ways to get you a copy of that if you didn't get in the pledge and jo join the Kickstarter. But that just shows why it's always worth keeping in touch with what's going on the channel. You can get Spencer at Okupad and our merch as well. We have been having several comments recently about how soothing our voices are um, and how they send people to sleep. That may not have survived my raspy voice during the recent uh, cold or flu that I've had, but needs must. Um, right, now it is time for me to look at the rules of this puzzle by Samu Piano, a reasonably familiar name on the channel and one whose puzzles I have enjoyed regularly in the past. Looking forward to having a go at this. It's called Knights and Bishops in the Fog. Normal Sudoku rules apply, and that's one to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Okay. Place the digits one to nine. Oh, I'm sorry, that, that is normal Sudoku rules. Anti knight Sudoku rules apply. So cells a chess knights move apart cannot contain the same digit. And because I noticed that as I was talking to you early on, I have fished out. Nighty McKnight face, my little reminder man to tell me when I forget that there is a knight's move restriction in this puzzle. So those two cells highlighted couldn't contain the same digit, nor could those two. That's a knight's move. You know that better than I do. Um, fog obviously will clear as we place correct digits. Some cells have a number in the top left corner, 69 in this one. This number gives the sum of all digits along one of the diagonals containing the cell which diagonal must be deduced by the solver. So this is either adding that or that. And this 36 is either adding those five cells, obviously they can contain repeats, indeed they must, or those. Um, there are arrow Sudoku rules, we haven't revealed any arrows yet, but digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in the bulb. All arrows are two cells long. Okay, well, I mean, all that's fascinating. I cannot imagine how we're going to get a start in this, but that's the sort of thing we get to discover. You get to watch the epiphanies as they happen live, um, and I'm going to press start and see what happens. Let's get cracking. I'm so scared. What on earth can we do here? Okay, the first thing to... I mean... The, the classic thing about Fog of War is they're so linear. You've only got these two clues. Like if there were 10 clues in the puzzle, 10 revealed cells, these are the last place I would start looking. But apparently I can deduce something from these, so I've got to try. It's hilarious. Um, okay, let's think about a maximum value for this. 9, 8 in each of the double bits would give us 51 plus nine, plus nine. That's the absolute maximum. That is 69. Okay, I mean, that's interesting straight away. So let's color these two diagonals. One of them is the absolute maximum. I mean, I sp maybe that was predictable. I didn't recognize that number for that reason. So, so this digit is nine or eight. And then one of these is the other of nine or eight. One of these is a nine. One of these two is a nine. And then either that's a nine, eight pair, or that is, or that is, or that is. One of my concerns at the beginning was, how is symmetry ever going to be disturbed? Well, that'll come under the fog, I suppose. 
Now, let's think about this 36, because that's pretty high too. Even as I was saying it's 36, I was thinking there must be a repeat digit, because 98765 only adds up to 35. However, if this went in the direction... Oh, there isn't a direction of the 9. OK, well, it can't have a 9 in this box, because there is a 9 in one of those cells. So it's maximum in this box. I'm just guessing it points north on the on the red diagonal. It might point southwest on the blue. Um, <clears throat> maximum in this box is 8, 7. The maximum in this cell is 8, because there is a 9 in this column. So we're only up, only up, to 15 plus 8 is 23. See, that's depressing, because that leaves a minimum of 13, which is barely a usable minimum at all in box 2 or 8. Oh, no, no, OK. This cell... Oh, well, it depends. If it goes through... If, if green was the correct... 69 diagonal here, then this cell couldn't be 9 or 8. But I mean, that is a bit of a broken. Re oh, there's a knight's move thing as well. So this digit, well, it sees all of those. It also sees all of these, doesn't it? This cell sees all of these cells, so it can never be 9 or 8. Does this one as well? Yes, it does. Uh, not quite. It doesn't see this cell. And that matters. It sees all of these, including the knight's move, but it doesn't see that one. So it could be whatever's in there, as long as the other digit from 9 and 8 no, OK, it sees both of those, and they're 9 and 8. So neither of these can be 9 and 8. Oh. No, hang on. If green is the... OK, the first thing I'm going to say, actually, is that if you... This is a pretty backwards way of going about this. But if you restricted that to 7, 6 only, which I think we might be able to do, and you restricted that to 7, 6 at a maximum, because for some reason that couldn't see 9 and that couldn't be 9 and 8, then you would only have 26 on the diagonal. You'd need to put a 10 there. <clears throat> so that's not what's happening. So there are 9s and 8s on this. Now, I was trying to establish whether this has to be 7, 6 at a max. But what I wasn't thinking was okay, this is going to be that's a 9 8 pair. Now, if yellow and red were the two diagonals that were given the totals, then that couldn't be either. But if yellow and blue were the diagonals, that cell is able to be that cell. I think. Oh, it's really interesting. Um, I would like to get to a position of ruling seven and six out of these cells. They can't be whatever's in there, so they can't be a nine and eight. That, that's fine. But let's imagine it's red and yellow, which I think... Oh, you see, that's interesting. That gives quite a degree of freedom. It gives a degree of freedom to that cell. No, though, it doesn't. That sees both of those. And that one sees both of those. So if it's red and yellow, neither of those can be 9 or 8. If it's yellow and blue, which is to all intents and purposes the other possibility, then that cell sees both of those, and that one sees both of those. So they can never... Right. In this cage, this 36 begins with a 7... Well, add a... Okay. 
I have to be very careful. At a maximum, a 7-6 pair. 13 there. This could be 8, because it can't be 9. There is a 9 in that column. 21. And another 15 minimum in the final... in the final countdown. Okay, if it was yellow and red, that would see both of those cells. If it was green and red, that would see both of those cells. So this can never be an eight either. So we're down to a seven, six maximum to begin and a seven. That's 20. Now these have to add up to at least 16. They have to have a nine in and therefore they can't clash with this nine. So yellow and red is not the pair that we're looking at. We're either looking at green and red or yellow and blue. They kind of go opposite and they have a two by two clash. Well, not clash necessarily, but let's say it's yellow and blue. Then we've got nine, eight pairs there and there and there. Then where can we put a nine or eight in the blue section? Not there, which sees them both, not there, there or there. They all see both of them. So only here. Other than that, we're going to have to stick with sevens and sixes. So we could have seven, six, seven, seven, which adds up to 27. Then we put a nine here. And that means whichever one of these cells that the, the blue or red in column five sees, which is a nine, this thing becomes an eight and that becomes a nine. And there's our first digit. Whoa, that is bonkers. OK, but that's great. Now, one of these two is an eight. And this arrow is going to disambiguate northwest and southwest and all that good stuff. Actually, maybe I will color these yellow as well instead of blue. Because we either have the yellow situation or the green situation now. Are they not great colors for you guys? I think the bright green is easier to see against the yellow and the dark green. So I'll leave that. No, I, no, I won't. Oh, let's change the yellow to purple. So we've either got... Oh, purple's difficult against the grey. Right, we've either got the orange situation or the green situation for these thingies. Now, right, this digit can't be nine. One of these two is nine. It can't be there on the arrow. That really is simplicity itself. While I'm faffing around with the colours, you're just shouting that at me. And now we know that it's orange that applies, not green because this nine has appeared on this diagonal. So I can fill in an eight here and a nine here, and this is a nine eight pair. I don't think the knight's move sorts out that. This is a nine eight pair. This one was gonna have to be a nine. And then I think we had to have sevens in both of those cells and a seven six pair here. And now we're away. Right, we've got a really big start. <laughs> we've got so much revealed in the fog, not. Um, but we can probably do some Sudoku or something. Now, this can't be, that can't be seven. Neither of these can be seven. So it's either a six, two or a five, three pair. If it's six, two, we know which side the six goes. Oh, there's a 17 here. Now, can that possibly be this diagonal? I hadn't seen that 17. Ah, the important thing is, can it be this diagonal? And the answer is no, because 654 is 15, is the maximum on the tiny short diagonal. So this 17 is doing this diagonal. Right, we can go yellow there. We can get rid of the orange here because we've basically done the 69 and 36. 17 there. Now, 171 is 9, and another 1 is 10, a 1 there is 11. And a 1, 2 there is 14. So many degrees of freedom. Three. That's not what I wanted to see. <laughs> oh, goodness. I don't know. Okay. Um, doesn't matter that that can't be 9 or 8, does it? Actually, it could be nine. That's weird. Oh, my goodness. How is that 17 any use? It just doesn't feel any use. I feel like I'm going to have to do Sudoku first. 
serves me right, you say. Right, one of those is an eight, because that can't be an eight by knight's move. Now, that's an X-wing on eights, and one of these, oh my goodness, excuse me a second. Sorry about that. I was just saying this X-wing on eights uses up the eights in column eight and nine and confines an eight up here. That is good because that's an X-wing on eights in rows one and two. Imagine this turning up in a fog of war puzzle. But now the eight in row three has to be here, which is peculiar, but clears a bit of fog. That can't be an eight on the knight's move now. Thank you, knighty McKnight face. So this is an eight and that fixes nine and eight up here. We're clearing the fog quite fast suddenly. Um, we need a nine in one of those two cells. Oh, nine in this box seems to have to be here, which looks like it's going to turn up on an arrow, but it can't do. So I'm putting it in and it's not on an arrow. Oh, all arrows are two cells long. I'd forgotten that bit of the stipulation. One of those is a nine. This must be finished. It's not. Nines are not finished. The nines remain in those cells, and I don't think the knight's move's fixing them. Right, this is not able to be a one or anything like it anymore. It's at least a three. So what's our minimum now? Three and a one-two pair is six, and one there is seven. And that seven is 14, and ones here and here is 16. So we've got only one degree of freedom as we go up here. That could be one-two or one-three must have a one in. That is three or four as a result. And this is three or four. And again, there must be a one in one of these cells, which is very beautiful because it means this can't be a one or it would break either the knight's move or ordinary Sudoku. So that is not the one. The one on this arrow is here, which will clear fog and prove I'm right. Um, now, if that was a two and that was a three, this would be impossible because there'd have to be a two here and it would see this cell. That's gorgeous. So the degree of freedom must get used up in one of those cells. We can't keep them both at the minimum. Therefore, everything else on the yellow diagonal, we can reduce to its absolute minimum. And that's going to give us a bit of a head start on placing ones in the puzzle, you would think. Although with a knight's move puzzle, this stuff can peter out quite quickly. Well, we know there's a one in one of those cells, so that's not a one. That is, then there's a one in one of these two and in one of those two. That's the sort of two by two pattern that knight's move just can't fix. Okay, so we didn't quite get those finished. Now these have to be different. Is that interesting? Three and four there. Not really. There must be a three in one of these two cells. How about that? Because it's either two, three here or three, four. Well, that's going to fix this arrow to start with, six and two. It also says this can't be a three. Now we get a two there. This is a three. That's a four. This can't be a three. That must be a one, two pair. And that's a three there. Let's get rid of the corner mark. Four is either there or there. One, this is five or seven. I haven't had any more of these diagonal clues and we've basically finished all the arrows. So now I'm gonna to have to do some Sudoku after all this time. Um, eight is in one of those cells. Seven, somewhere there. I don't really know what to look for at the moment. This is such an odd puzzle. Ah, seven can't be in those two cells because of that six, seven pair. So that's a one, five pair and that's a seven. Two has to be in one of those two. I'm gonna fully pencil mark this. Three sees that cell, four sees that cell, and any of them can be a five. Two, one, five, nine, six, seven. We've got eight, three, and four to place. That is three or four. But whatever it is, can't be in any of those cells. So in box five, it has to go there. I'm just gonna give them a color because I've noticed that and I might forget it. One, two, nine, eight, three. So 
I don't know. If these are from five, six, seven. That's probably not very interesting. Nine, one, seven, seven. One of these two is a seven. I feel like I want another clue from the puzzle, another indication of something, but I'm probably not going to get it. Well, I'm, I'm going to have to clear some fog to get it, so I can whistle for that. Um, maybe I'm going to have to think about this sort of thing then, where certain digits cannot appear elsewhere. So what is this? Which can't be any of those, so it must be one, three, four, six, or seven, but it can't be one or three. So it's four, six, or seven. I wonder if there's a way of ruling out four. If that was a four, this would be a four and that would be a four. It can't be four by knight's move. There is a very simple way. It seemed like it wanted to be six or seven, and it has become that. Oh, two in this row. You can just fill it in here. And that's going to fix both the ones there. And that's a five. And look at this seven. That's not on the diagonal with a nine on it. So it's those two, which are a three, four pair. And I can put nine in the corner. That's nice. I like the way of using that. And that nine fixes eight, nine. Maybe all my eights and nines will be done now. That's not eight. But much more importantly, that's not nine. This is... That fixes one here. Almost all the fog is gone. We've got one foggy cell left. One of those is a two. Uh, the only place for two in this column is down in this box. And in this column, in that, we've got a little X-wing on two. So that becomes a two in row eight. That was surprising and weird. That place is two in box Four and clears the remaining fog. Hurrah! We place two in box five. It's a beautifully constructed puzzle by Sammy Piano. It really is quite extraordinary. That's an eight. I mean, I think we have cracked it open here. We've we've broken the Enigma machine for today. Um, it is. Fabulous that we get these opportunities to look at this stuff. Seven in the final column has to be there now. This is a two-six pair. If the knight's move fixes that, I can't see how. These are from three, four, five. That's a triple here, so that's a seven. Um, I could have identified that being a seven some time ago, I now see. I can do six and five there. Thanks to the knight's move, that becomes seven, that's five, that's four. I really think we are in a finishing up phase, I'm delighted to say. The, that can't be two, actually, I've just noticed. So we put two in there. This is three or four. Still some threes and fours to tidy up. The colouring may come back into, into play at some point. Didn't really do a lot so far. Three in one of those two cells, four in one of those two, and still not afraid to pencil mark, of course, you know me. That's a six, it's the only place six can go in the box. This is a, that can't be five or seven, seven on the knight's move. So that's a five, seven pair. Now that eight does finish off all the eights in the puzzle. Um, that fixes four here. Don't think that's going to do anything else, and I'm right. But the six we got in column one finishes column one. This is now a six and a five down here. That fixes seven and three. We need a six in one of those cells. Is that mandated somewhere? Not seeing it. This three, four, five, triple, that can't be five. Oh, this is all so done and I can't see how. Never mind, I mean, we will get there now. I'm, I'm not gonna panic, I'm not gonna get stressed. These are from three, four, five, six. That one can't be a three by Knight's move. 
these obviously oh no there's still two to go in this box as well that is also from three four five six as are all of these right six sees both of those cells so i can finish sixes i think i was wondering about that earlier that's a six oh well actually no yes six sees that cell so i can do all sixes now I must be able to finish twos, and we're just looking at three, four, fives. Let's try and use the colours again. So one of those is orange, and therefore that is orange. Therefore that is orange. One of those is orange. Then this is the other of three, four. Let's call it green. And that's not allowed to be there. That's the point. So that becomes a five, and that isn't. Five there is going to stop five being there. Now five must be in one of those. That's a four. That's three. Orange becomes three. Doesn't get into a corner. Uh, that's a five. Green becomes four. And that's a four. Let's get rid of all the colouring in the grid now. And they aren't four, so that is... Uh, we've got a 3-5 deadly pattern that that five is going to fix by the knight's move. Thank you, Mr. Knighty. And thank you, Sammy Piano, for a lovely, lovely puzzle. Really interesting start and beautiful continuation throughout. I mean, absolute exemplar of Fog of War. Really interesting. We found lots of knights and bishops in the fog. Um, and a delight to play that one. What we didn't find in the fog, of course, is my other red pieces, a king and a queen. Maybe next time. Thank you for watching, and we will see you on the channel. Bye for now.